And every time there's a shooting, we play this ridiculous theater where this committee gets together and proposes a bunch of laws that would do nothing to stop these murders. Senator from Connecticut just said the folks on the other side of the aisle have no solutions. Well, the senator from Connecticut knows that is false. And he knows that's false because Senator Grassley and I together introduced legislation, Grassley Cruz, targeted at violent criminals, targeted at felons, targeted at fugitives, targeted at those with serious mental disease to stop them from getting firearms, to put them in prison when they try to illegally buy guns. What happens in this committee after every mass shooting is Democrats propose taking away guns from law-abiding citizens, because that's their political objective. But what they propose, not only does it not reduce crime, it makes it worse. And most reasonable, most reasonable people get that. Ted Cruz said something interesting yesterday. He called this conversation ridiculous theater, that the gun laws that are being proposed, the changes, would have done nothing to stop those shootings. Does he have a point? Is this a uniquely American failure? Does he have a point? Well, the, the, this is what every time there is a slaughter, a mass shooting, someone who does not want to be accountable for what we need to do says, well, that wouldn't have prevented this thing. You know, arguably, if you took that approach to any law, you would argue that we shouldn't pass any laws that are designed to protect the health and well-being of the American people. Um, so listen, yet again, we have a situation where there are seven children who have lost their father, yeah. where there are families in, in, in two big states of our country who are mourning the loss forever will be without their family members, their friends who were innocent, who were going about right. their lives and were gunned down. And, but, you know, but guys, I, I want to be, again, I'm going to start but, with where I, I, where I started, which is I thought Sandy Hook would be right, but the it thing didn't. that compelled everyone, but, and it didn't. I agree with and you, it but, it, but it didn't. And, and my question is, how do you change minds in the Senate? You were in the Senate. You know. Elections matter. Elections matter. And, you know, there are a, a bunch of folks, Moms Demand Action, a bunch of folks from Gabby Giffords to, to the Brady folks who, we who heard you know, s sign Vice up President. and join them. And let's, let's, let's say that we're going to hold our elected people accountable mm -hmm. if they're not going to be um, with us on what we need in terms of reasonable gun safety laws. But, Madam Vice President, we heard from the head of Moms Demand Action earlier in the broadcast who said the president has it in his power to do something right now. And the president has said he is prepared to sign legislation. But he can also take executive action. I don't think the president is excluding that. But I, again, I, I, I want to be clear that if we really want something that is going to be lasting, we need to pass legislation. So Ted Cruz calls Democratic efforts to pass legislation that would stop mass shootings theater. Right, that's theater, taking steps to stop people from getting slaughtered. Not when Republicans use the same tired arguments over and over and over that any regulations will only harm law-abiding gun owners and have zero impact on the bad guys, so we shouldn't pass laws and that'll somehow solve a problem that literally continues on a daily basis. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Now, of course, the right is focusing on the straw man that they always go to, which is this idea that the radical leftists are gonna come for your guns. What happens in this committee after every mass shooting is Democrats propose taking away guns from law-abiding citizens, because that's their political objective. But let's be real here. The legislation we're focused on right now is H.R. 8, the Universal Background Checks Act, and H.R. 1446, which gives federal law enforcement more time to vet gun buyers. That's a long way away from gun confiscation like the right has been hyperventilating about. And not only that, these are bills that enjoy overwhelming and bipartisan support from the American people. And yet still Republicans in Congress have been immovable in their opposition to any and all gun legislation. Meaning the only reasonable explanation is that they're fine with the way things are now. The Republicans will also elevate the talking point that new laws will only affect those who follow the law. They'll only make it more difficult for the good guys to get their hands on a gun. But two things here. First, no one knows that. No one knows how many crimes can be stopped because regulations were put in place to make it more difficult. But we can be sure that putting strong federal regulations on the books won't make it more likely that we'll see shootings. It can only help. And that doesn't mean bad guys may not still manage to get their hands on a gun, but if a new law stops even one person, wasn't it worth it? 
And second, adding to that point, the argument can be made that the bad guys will always circumvent the law. So is the answer to have no law since they won't follow them anyway? Of course not. And it's insane to think that that's the solution. If cars keep speeding and crashing on one stretch of road, you implement a safer speed limit. Will that stop everyone from speeding? No. But will it stop most people? Yes. And if the people who speed get ticketed, they'll probably be less likely to do it in the future. Nothing is a perfect solution, but that doesn't mean we don't try for a solution at all. The simple fact is that we've tried the Republicans' way. We have tried doing nothing and passing no federal regulations and having endless debates that lead to zero substantive progress and the shootings have continued. That way objectively does not work. All we have to show for it is more shootings, more deaths, more heartache, and more scared Americans. We are well beyond the point where we can say that this can't be the new normal. It is normal. But we're not past the point where we can say that this can't be acceptable because it'll never be acceptable. Republican intransigence shouldn't mean that more people have to die. And at the end of the day, here's my last argument. No one enjoys regulation. We don't like higher speed limits on county highways, or when a new traffic light goes up, or taking our shoes off in airports, or walking through metal detectors at concerts. But we do it because they've been put in place to make the broader population safer. The fact is that we should be willing, eager even, to accept minor inconveniences in our lives if it means that even one shooting could be avoided. If having to submit to a background check, or dealing with a longer wait period, or whatever other minor inconvenience means that even a single shooter could be dissuaded from getting his hands on a gun, isn't that worth it? Isn't saving the life of one person, one cashier, one churchgoer, one concert attendee, one student, one child worth it? It would be for me, and I can guarantee you that if you asked any of the 18 victims' families from just this week alone, they'd have believed it would be worth it too. And look, I know this issue has become hyper-politicized, and at this point, most of the intransigence here is just a matter of having retreated onto our own sides of the political spectrum. But we can all agree that something needs to be done. That inaction will only exacerbate the problem here. Preventing another mass shooting has to be bipartisan, but the gut instinct here can't be that regulation is somehow worse than another mass shooting. If you're a responsible gun owner, you can be for gun rights and still want it to be difficult to get one. You should want to weed out the bad guys so that those people don't reflect poorly on you. Because right now, when the gun community refuses to endorse any change whatsoever, it's seen by everyone else as a tacit endorsement of the status quo. And the status quo, frankly, is unacceptable. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell. And please subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I not only break down the biggest stories of the week, but I also interview major players in the world of politics, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Jamie Raskin, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.